Hey guys, Rich Page, our Jemathan Timber Frame Company, the main timber framer. I'm going to demonstrate doing a drop cut on a rafter end. Uh, this is going to go into a king post. Uh, so I want to show you what the uh, technique would be for a drop cut here. Uh, a while back, Timber Doodles put a uh, comment on there about drop cutting, and you know it certainly can be quicker than doing uh, kerfing out a tenon. I particularly don't like drop cutting. This case is a little bit different because I've got the angle going this way. I can control the saw. If we can see over here, I do not like doing a drop cut straight down because I don't feel as though I have control of the saw. Some folks who have some experience doing this may feel comfortable with it. Uh, I still have all 10 and uh, I've been doing this an awful long time. So I won't do a drop cut like this. Some people will. But I will do a drop cut or consider doing a drop cut if I've got an angle where I can control the saw here. So let's uh, let's see what we can do to do a drop cut. First, we're going to mark this out. You can see I've got it marked, but I want to I want to show you again. This is a jig that I've made that centers two inches on your timber. So if your timber is seven and seven eighths, if it's a eight and a quarter, if it's an eight and an eight, it's still going to put your tenon exactly in the center. I've got another video uh, online of this jig. You really want to want to take a look at using one of these. It's simple as pie and your tenon will be centered exactly the in the center of whatever your timber is every time. The other thing you can do with this real quick is you can take this piece out at two inches. If you wanted to make a three inch tenon, you could put a three inch piece in here. You could put a one inch piece in here and you're, it will be centered every time as long as the holes in the back are exactly in the center of your of your measuring device. Give that some thought. That's a really slick tool, easy to make. And once you start using it, you're going to say to yourself, why did I not have one earlier? All right, I'm going to demonstrate cutting this drop cut. Uh, we'll cut out both pieces and we'll see what it looks like. I've already set the saw depth, but I'm going to double check the depth. And my depth is good. Okay, I want to go back for a second. I made another video. One of the things uh, in making the other video was I cut this with a Moffle bandsaw. This is flat, plumb, true at 90 degrees to the cheek sides. So doing that, when I cut this, this, this saw blade is going to be flat to this, which means it's also going to be perpendicular to where I want my tendon. If you don't get a good cut here uh, for a drop, or if you're looking over here for a drop, if this isn't flat and you, and you think you're going to make a drop cut, your, your table of your saw is going to follow this face. If this isn't flat and true, you're not going to get a good cut. So think about the drop very carefully. If you don't have a perfectly flat surface that you're cutting on, your table of your saw, when you put it like this, has to follow plumb and true. If this isn't plumb and true, you can cut this, but then this face, the cheek cuts, may or may not be plumb or square. So that's where some of the downfalls are for the drop cut. You've got to be really careful in doing it, but you also have to be careful that when you get your cut, you're going to get a perpendicular cheek cut so it fits into your, your joinery well. So that's something to think about is, is that the face that you're going to ride your saw, your saw on for your drop cut really needs to be flat, plumb, and true to your sides of your timber. Let's give this thing a whirl. One side, we've already done the cheek cut. If you do your face cut, if this is plumb and true, she's going to come right off. I'll give you a picture of that. I'll show you in a second. Let's cut the other one.
Well, this one didn't quite fall off, but she's close. There it is. And we'll have a little bit of chisel work to clean up. So that piece fell off. So you can see over here, uh, I'm a little inside on my drop, uh, trying to maintain the tenon thickness. So there you have it. That's a, that's a drop cut on a rafter end. I feel as though I've got some control here. I really don't prefer doing a drop cut up and down. Some people, some people can. You got experience. You like it. Uh, that's up to you. Here's what it looks like over here. You're going to see a bunch of sawdust. Clean that up. You'll see where I came in here with a curve first time. Took another bite. I'll clean that up with a chisel. Over here, I'll clean this up with a chisel. And uh, we'll put our gauge on it for the tenon. We'll make sure we've got two inches. We'll round off the edges a little bit and we'll call it done. Okay, there you go. There's a demonstration for a drop cut on a rafter top cut. Uh, give me some thoughts. Give me some feedback. Click like and subscribe. Thanks, guys.